Hi there friends, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts and today I'm here to show you a little bit, I've been doing a little bit more slow stitching. I've made these pouches in the past and um, I really liked making them so I had started on a couple more and I'm going to show you how to make one if you like them. Uh, kind of in a continuing fashion of showing you um, what you can do with your finished slow stitch. So basically these these are a pouch which I'm going to also show you how to line. These are not lined yet but I'll take you through um, how I made the actual pouch and um, as you can see they open up and uh, you can see the inside of them right now which is all the threads but we're going to cover that with a line with a lining. And it also, you know, helps to protect anything that you might put in there from getting uh, caught on on the on the lining. Um, it does fit a phone very nicely. Um, I don't know if you would keep your phone in one of these, but um, it kind of, it kind of would be uh, if you take it somewhere, it would be nice for a. Uh, kind of an event bag that you would just take, you know, your phone and lipstick and your keys or whatever in there. So otherwise you could use it as a uh, place to keep your ephemera, uh, you know, wh whatever you want to do. I have a whole bunch of these, these type of pouches that I use for all my uh, supplies. So you could keep your sewing supplies in here or whatever you want to do after you were finished making it. Or just keep it as pretty to look at. So this one, let me show you these first. This one was done in kind of all of a neutral, neutral colors. I'll open it up so you can see the inside. I have this pin here to mark where where a um, closure is going to go. So um, basically, it's all done with slow stitch, and I used neutral colors, uh, browns beiges, whites, uh, a little, here's a little uh, kind of a beigey pink color. I used buttons, trims, laces. This piece here I dyed with uh, some, some ink, ink that, I, that I stained it with. Um, these would probably not be washable, uh, although you could like spot clean them very easily. You know, take a if you got some something on there, you could take a a, a wet cloth and and spot it off. Okay, and here's the back. A little daisy peeking out here. And here's one that I made more in the colors. This one I started with. Um, I started with an old handkerchief that I had, and you can see that it's it's starting to unravel. And um, actually, I got this at a shop, a little shop in uh, Lake City, Colorado. And uh, they had these uh, vintage handkerchiefs, and you can tell this one was well washed because it did. It's that the material on it is very thin. I have a, a rose from um, the lace collar that I've that I've had that I've been using all. Um, I'm not a I'm not the type of person that hoards things. Uh, as far as like oh I can't cut this up I I don't want to use it yet. So but I am I am I can just cut it up and use it and not, so I have no problem with that. Um, so the, the, like I said this came from a piece of. Uh, a vintage collar and um, it's all the inside threads um, here's the front now you do have to be careful about the orientation when you're working on this and I'll talk about that in a minute because when you uh, when you turn it over you want this to be uh, going up this is a, a an applique that I got off of, of an old curtain in my niece, the great niece's room, um, and here's some more of the handkerchief that I used. Just various other elements that you can find for slow stitching. 
Okay. Keep this one kind of here so you can see a little bit of it. What I do is I start with a piece of... Let me get my little instruction thing here. I start with a piece of white quilted fabric. And you can use any fabric you want. It, it helps to have this quilted because you need kind of a thick piece of fabric but you don't need it so thick that it's hard to sew through to do your slow stitching on but um, you need something that's thicker than just a plain than just a plain fabric like this because you need something that has a little body to it you could I suppose um, do all of your slow stitching on a thinner piece of fabric and then back it with another piece of fabric or uh, like say for instance an interfacing so that would work as well so what you want to do is you want to cut this piece if you want to you can make this basically any size you want so but with the, if you want to follow the directions for mine mine is um, 12 inches by 7 inches and then I turn over two and a half inches for the top flap so I measure that usually I put a little usually I put a little pin in there at the two and a half mark so that will come down that's your top flap I'm going to make a little fold in there so I can tell where it is as I'm going. Um, I'm going to keep my pin in there for the moment. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the bottom up to that little fold that I just made a little bit shy of it because you want it to be able to you want it to be able to fold over. So you want it a little bit a little bit shy of that. Okay. And you might want to mark that. So then you have approximately, let's see what this measures when it's closed. Uh, almost five inches, about four and three quarter inches by seven and a half. So seven and a half, four and three quarters of the of the uh, the finished measurement so basically a little over five by seven okay so now you have your your folds here what you want to do now is you want before you start your slow stitching is you want to decide which parts are going to be up <clears throat> So what I usually do is I put, I put the flap down. Whatever's here needs to go up this way. So whatever um, slow stitch things you need needs to go this way. Then I'm going to open it up. Whatever goes here, this would be the top. Needs to go this way. Okay, then let's turn it over. Whatever's here, and I'm putting the, the pin so that the top of the pin goes up, needs to go up like that. Now you can mark this with a little piece of tape, you know, with an arrow going up, which might be a little bit smarter than doing it this way, because I have a tendency to catch my hand on these pins sometimes. Okay, so then now when you open it up, you can tell which way you have to go. See how all of this, all of the pins go in a different direction? This pin is just to mark the mark the side, so I'm going to take that out because I did have my little bit of a a crease here, so I can tell where that is with my little crease. Okay, so see how. When you're working on your slow stitch, you're going to have to work on up to here. This is the front. 
<coughs> and let's put a few things down so you can kind of tell what I'm talking about. I'm going to get up my, uh, get my fabric that I have. Actually, let's, I don't have very many of these roses left. I think I will cut one off for the use with this. You can see that. Now this also comes with kind of a crocheted netting at the top. So I'm going to use that. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to, uh, you're going to just be working on this, this uh, top flap for now. And you can have this, this lace extend a little bit down here below and I like that I like that look and when you fold it over you're gonna have some some go towards the back here which is actually the back of the the piece but this doesn't uh, have any kind of pretty much does not have a direction so you'll be okay with that so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually before you start your slow stitching you're gonna um, get started and <clears throat> either pin down I'll pin now for convenience sake or you could use a little bit of the uh, glue stick because with a glue stick and I'll do that kind of on the, this back part here is with a glue stick you would have um, just a little bit of stickiness but it's it disappears and it's easy kind of easy to sew through I'm going to leave the pin in there because it, until that dries, <clears throat> because it's a little bit heavy, of a, heavier of a piece. Okay, so I still want, I still want to mark which direction I'm going in on this flap. In case I have anything that's kind of directional. On this piece of fabric, which I really like. I think I'm gonna tear this just a little ways. Okay. Okay, and I can kind of audition this to see where I want it on here. I like that look. And it's okay if it overlaps. You can either later you can either leave it like that or you can uh, uh, trim it off. Okay. And I'm just kind of just seeing where I want all these things. Once again, I've got my my pin and any pins I put in here I'm going to put going up like this so I can remember that that's the way it, that it should go. Um, this, kind of like this I might kind of uh, ruche up a little bit as I sew it. This is some some uh, white linen from the um, from a handkerchief or tablecloth or runner or something and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pin that into place for now now there's no need to really get to get too far ahead of yourself on the, on this stuff you can go ahead like right now and start sewing some of this stuff down. So, I mean, in other words, you do not have to plan the whole entire uh, piece before you start stitching. You can just start stitching at any time. Okay, so that just gives me a general idea that I'm going to need to pleat that when I start uh, when I start sewing it down. And this part here, this section here, I don't necessarily need to put anything there because I can do, I can do some stitching in that area. Uh, let's see what else I have here. That's that's cool. 
I kind of like this. This would take up a quite a ways if I wanted to use that on the back and then I could layer it up. Let's see how that would work. First of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this. Let me see what the, the front would look like. Okay, so here's the front. I'll put this going over here because you have to remember whatever underneath that flap is going to be covered up. So, um, not that you don't want to do stitching there and so on, but you, but you want to, if you're going to do like a whole, a whole scene or something, you have to know that that's going to be covered up when it's closed. Okay, let's see how this would work. Kind of like that. And I just cut that. And I like that, that it's kind of ruched there. See how right along where I'm cutting underneath this part is kind of gathered a little bit, but not a whole lot. I like that look. A little bit more. The reason I'm doing it this way is because there's no need for me to cut this all the way down and in, in case later I want to use this extra piece, you know, in its entirety. Okay, and I can leave this kind of hanging over here. Okay, I think I'll cut it to here. And put it back in for now in my bag. Um, I was going to tell you too, those of you that have seen my videos on how to make the the sewing books, <clears throat> I do just have one sewing book left in my in my Etsy shop, and I'll put the link for my Etsy shop in the description box. Uh, so I am making more sewing books to put in the Etsy shop. So if you've been wondering about that, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So that could be glued down. Now when I turn this, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pin it for now for the moment. And I can also layer other things on top of here. I'm gonna pin it with this this going up because this is the way it goes up for anything else I have to layer over it. So now when I'm working on the back then I know that this has to go let me fold this over I know that this has to go up. So what I'm going to do is instead of I'm not going to stitch this down I'm just going to leave it loose when I stitch it onto the the other side so that it hangs below here so whatever I have now since I've used this purple on on the somewhere else on, on this same area on the front I'm going to use it again and um, let's see I think I might just cut this I can cover over this. Okay, I'm just checking where I have it on that flap. See, I have it on the flap here, so I might want to put this over here just to bury it a little bit. It really doesn't matter that that this is not even. I don't care. I'm gonna probably cover it over either with stitches or something else. I 
Okay, so you get the general idea of how how we do that, how we get it. So it's so you will complete in this in this way your whole entire slow stitch. And um, when you're making it, you can um, put on your straight stitch. Use I use kind of a leaf stitch here, French knots, lazy daisies, stem stitch. You know, whatever. Here's here's an example of how how that ruching looks like pleating. I did the pleating on that on this piece of fabric, and then I sewed it. It kind of gives it a kind of a pleated or a ruched look. Okay, <clears throat> so you're working on this. You get it all done. You sew some charms or buttons or whatever you have onto it. Then it's time to turn it into the pouch. So you take it. And let me get one that's uh, that's just blank because it's easier to show on that. Here's one that's blank. I have this one marked. So we're we're pretending like this is like this is finished. It's got all its slow stitching on it. And we want to we want to make a lining for it. So what we're going to do before we do anything else is we're going to measure a piece of fabric that is three quarters of an inch all the way around bigger than than this. Okay, so three quarters of an inch all the way around. And you can also mark, um, and this is going to be the lining. You can also mark on the lining your folds. So that would probably be a good idea to mark the folds of where the top, where the top fold is for the flap. <clears throat> well, let's make sure we're going the right direction on this. Okay, yeah, we are. We just happen to. Okay, and then you want to mark on the side here where your flap where your flap is. Okay, so you're gonna take your lining and set it aside for the moment. Then you're going to take your slow stitched piece and put it together. Hold it over so you make sure you have just a little bit of a, of a gap here. And you will be used to this by now because you'll have all your slow stitching on here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Um... Hello again, I'm back. I switch over to a different um, recording and I will join these two together. So we've got that we've got that measured where we want it, and I'll show you one of these finished ones so you can sh so you can see see what I did. <clears throat> and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to sew, and I'm just going to sew the sides. I'm not going to sew the flap, so I want this flap up like this, and I'm going to sew the sides down. And I'm going to use the half inch, about a half an inch mark, or even less if you can. But you want at least ha um, half an inch or so, so you can catch everything in there. And um, <clears throat> when I was sewing this, this side, I pinned these, these lace pieces. I pinned them up so they were up out of the way of the sewing. 
so then they kind of you know flop free same for, same for these little tassels I made sure that I didn't catch any of them in the edge so I just sewed about a half of an inch a quarter to a half of an inch okay now I got that got that done now I want to make make the lining <clears throat> so I take my lining finished the lining. Here it is. I take my lining and I fold it. Now because I have um, a print, I want one side to be the inside of the pouch. So if I turn it this way and sew it, then I'm going to have to turn it inside out, but there's a better way to do it. <clears throat> turn it the other way and sew it if you have it this is if you have a directional or any kind of a print that's it. if your back is different than your front in other words if the back is different than the front okay and then now you're not going to sew the lining with the flap down either you're going to put the flap up you're going to pin your sides Now you might think this is the wrong way because uh, you're used to turning things, but this is not going to be turned. This is just going to fit right into the pouch like it is. <clears throat> you're going to use a, on this, you're going to use a three quarter inch seam. And then you're going to trim it, you're going to trim it down. But when you put it on inside, and this is too big for this right now, but once you get it sewn and trimmed, then then the inside, this part's going to fold over. Oh, I forgot to do that. That's the important part. Okay, so, sorry. You're going to want to fold over a quarter of an inch towards the back, not a quarter of an inch, I'm sorry, three quarters of an inch on the, <coughs> on the top, on the top. Remember we cut three quarters of an inch all the way around. We're going to fold over three quarters of an inch on the top and the bottom. I'm just estimating here. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. So that when we sew, that's going to get caught in there. And then you pin. And then you sew your three quarters of an inch. Only on the sides and only... <clears throat> you don't start up here. You start here and you go down three quarters of an inch. Start over here and go three quarters of an inch okay you do not need to sew across the bottom the only time you would need to sew across the bottom is if maybe you made it a little bit too you made your lining a little bit too um, too big and you had too much too much uh, material in your lining then to solve that problem you could sew across the bottom but for now you don't need to let's not do that Okay, now I do not have my sewing machine so that I can film it, so I sewed it ahead of time, and I'll show you the <coughs> the muslin one that I sewed, and I made a muslin one for th for this because I thought it would be kind of go better. And, but you can use any fabric you want for the inside, as long as it's a thin enough fabric that it's not going to um, bulk up the seams of the 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 pouch too much. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to see if this is going to fit inside here. And once I get that in there and see that it's going to fit okay, which it is, it's not, it's not too, it fits to the edges. And you can see down in there, 
that that's the right side of the fabric. The seams, the seams are facing the, the side there. See how that, how that is? And that's why you want to do it this way on this one. So that when you put it in there, then that, this is the inside. Okay? So, <clears throat> basically, I need, if I needed to um, make it smaller, then I would do that now. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to trim the sides. Okay, when I come up to here, I'm not going to go all the way up, because I'll need that. I'm going to trim it off right there at the edge, because I'll need this to fold over to fit inside the, the front flap. Okay. So I'm going to cut this up just to where the, the top of the, the top of the um, bottom part is. And then cut this over. Okay. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could iron this, but I think I'll just finger press it a little bit here. This might go the other way. Okay. Because this is where you're going to sew it. You're going to, you're going to either hand sew it or you can machine sew it, but it w would take a little bit. A finagling around if you're going to machine sew it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take this this off. <clears throat> I'm going to fit this lining in here. It's okay if it's a little bit bigger. And also, if you wanted to, you could put a pocket on it. But I really didn't see any need to put a pocket on. You know, something that's this small because it. You really can't get too too much uh, a weight into it. Okay, and I'm fitting it in there with my hands, making sure it goes into the corners. And ideally, this should come up, and it does. Okay. And I could cut this just a little bit more. See how I kind of am having that pleat there? I'm going to cut it just a little bit more. Okay, so it lays flat. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to pin it. I'm going to try to fit this as flat as possible to this to this front part. Okay, and this will this will need a little bit more finagling, but I, I won't take the time to do it right now. And that side will, and then you fold this over so it eats up with the front. Now you could glue this in place or pin it uh, before you sew it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Threaded, and you can use w whatever color um, thread matches your your lining. Okay, I'm gonna start here. 
and basically if you want to you can slow stitch on here too you can do any stitch that you want on this on, to tack this uh, this lining down to the front I think I'm gonna do a more like of an overcast and I'm coming right I'm coming right to the edge coming right to the edge here because I want to get that I want to get that in there so I'm going down I'm tacking that okay and I'm gonna go all the way around with that with that tacking stitch if I wanted to I could also and I'll show you the the overcast stitch you can do the, the overcast stitch, which is you have a loop. And I'm doing this from the front so that I can see um, uh, what's on the what's on the front, so I don't get things caught in it. And I pull it through that loop, and then I make my next. I'll do three or four of these so I can show you then what they look like. This is the overcast or the blank or the blanket stitch. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the back so I can kind of see where I'm at and come up. And I'm gonna do a little overcast in the corner because I'm changing I'm changing directions and that overcast you can see the difference between when I first stitched this little stitch on there this overcast stitch is going to be much sturdier because it's going to hold that that front and that lining together and it's going to give a kind of a finished edge to to this area Okay, so then you'll need to go all the way around, back to your beginning, and then you also need to do it to the inside of your lining, to this part. You'll also need to, to sew that down, and I'll probably do that with an overcast stitch as well. If I wanted to, I could select one of the other colors of the embroidery floss, such as this brown, and do it in the brown so it has a brown overcast stitch on it. And that would be pretty as well. Okay, so I'm gonna, for now, gonna end that. And now the only thing I have left to do is either to put a closure you could, if you wanted to, you could um, have sewn in some kind of straps into the side here, but you'll need to do it before you put the lining, the lining in, most likely. Or however, you know, there's various ways you could do that. But um, I'm, I'm not going to put one on mine, so I'm going to show you that. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of those Velcro dots and make sure they're really fixed there onto, let me see if I can find them. I should have prepared and gotten them out before. There they are. They're fester dots, they're called. Probably have some some more of these somewhere else that are open, but for now I'm gonna. Okay, and these are these are basically just those Velcro dots, and I think they work real well to hold things <clears throat> hold things down. 
So what I would do is I would measure where I, and they're sticky back, but I also glue them. But the sticky back is kind of nice because it works. You want to put them, you'll want to put it on the inside. And then to determine where you want to put the one down here, I actually just adhere it to, to this. And then I put it down. Okay, and that holds it. And what I do is I take it off. Of there. And it's stuck to there where it, where it should be. And I'll, you know, I'll test it a, a couple times to see if that's where I want it. And it is. So then at that time, then I would glue it. And, and I need to get my lining finished first, I think, before I glue these down. I'm going to leave them on there so I can see the, the placement. Um, and another reason I, I might want to uh, take them off for a minute is because I might want to sew a button on the front. And if I want to sew a button on there for decorative purposes only, not to close it, just to... Here's my button bag. Sorry that took me so long. And I'll want to find... It's kind of pretty, but... Nah, I, 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 do, I don't like that. I'll need either something lighter or something darker than that. Well, it's the same one. Okay, and you'll be able to either sew this on or uh, glue it on. And I would sew it on if, unless it has, see how it, it, it left the, uh, whoever took this off, it left the, the sewing on there, which is kind of nice. And sometimes I even sew them ahead of time. I'll sew, I'll sew a button just so it has that look. And then so when I need it, I can just glue it down and it looks like it's been sewn. But if you do sew it, and <clears throat> sometimes this might call for a, not this color, of course, but for a bigger button. I actually like this size, so I'm just going to show you with this size. I don't love the color. Well, I, I'm, it's grown on me. But this is a good size button. So what I would do, after I had the lining finished, is I would pick this off. It's it sticks pretty good. You know what? I think it sticks really good. So I'm going to do what I use what I said before. Use a button that has already had the threads in it, and and glue it down with the um, fabric tack. That's probably what I'm going to do on this one. And I'm also going to also give these some more glue from the fabric tack. Just pry them off kind of loosely and give them some more, some more glue. So then I have my finished pouch. Thanks for joining me today. I wish you all peace of mind. These uh, these two pouches will most likely be in my Etsy store soon. So if you wish to purchase them, you can go there, and I'll give the the directions to that. Peace of mind to you. Thanks for joining me. Bye now.